Hey folks, this is Mel Zabecki, the Education Outreach Coordinator at the Arkansas Archaeological Survey based at the Coordinating Office here in Fayetteville. Today we're going to talk for this lab series about a little bit of pottery reconstruction. Now, we don't often find nice whole pots in the ground. It's not very common. Some of them stay pretty well in the ground and are pretty stable, but a lot of them just wind up breaking. And we wind up finding a ton of these little teeny tiny flat things in the ground called pot shirts. Now, a lot of the time we only find isolated pot shirts. So we don't find like huge amounts of them or, or anything like that. But every once in a while we do get lucky and there was a pot that was in the ground that was broken into a bunch of pieces, but in place. So this one right here has been reconstructed from a bunch of different pot shirts. But you can see there's a couple of little pieces missing and there's always going to be a little bit missing. But for the most part, we can see very well uh, the construction of the vessel, the vessel shape, the vessel type, and all the decoration. Sometimes we can actually understand the vessel decoration and the vessel type just from these pot shirts because there are a lot of vessel types and shapes and motifs that are repeated across sites. But sometimes you have a site that's not very well known or that doesn't have a lot of archaeology done to it. And you wind up maybe finding some pot shirts that you want to reconstruct so you can get a better idea of the shapes that are available at that site and of the motifs that are available there. So a lot of times people spend painstaking amounts of time reconstructing vessels such as this one and this one here that's uh, currently being uh, put back together. So the reason that we put things back together uh, there are a couple of different reasons. One of them is because it's so much easier to identify and recognize a, um, an object by looking at it without having to use your imagination. So a lot of the times, of course, for museum exhibits, you want to be able to put back to get things back together so the public can understand what was there. As far as archaeologists go, though, we don't necessarily have to have a beautiful reconstructed pot. We can have pieces like this that aren't completely complete, but that we get a really good idea of what the shape was. It's not so pretty, but we get a really great idea of what the shape was. And the reason that we want to know the shape and the different decorations is because that can inform us about different trade routes and uh, how ideas were flowing between cultures and how sites are unique in some places. So to understand the vessel shape and the motif and the design on them uh, can tell us a lot about the culture and how they compare with other cultures in the area. So we want to know about this for data collection to understand how cultures were interacting. And also because it brings people back to, you know, it brings the culture back to life when you can actually see the article, the, the vessels. So how would we go about reconstructing, first of all, is that we would clean, just like any other uh, artifact, we would clean the pottery really well with just toothbrushes and water. We would dry the pieces really, really well. So days and days we would let all, because pottery is porous a lot of the time if it's not glazed. And so we would let it dry for a very long time to make sure all of the moisture was out of it. And then we would oftentimes label every single piece. So you can see in the inside of this vessel, every piece is labeled. And that's so that if one piece goes missing or comes apart or gets misplaced, we can know exactly what site that's from. So each, each of those is labeled with the same number, but it all refers back to the same archeological site that it was found at. So after the labeling, cleaning, drying, labeling, then you would begin to put stuff back together. And first of all, you would normally lay out all the pieces so you would know exactly what's going to go with what because you don't want to start gluing and then maybe like find the piece that was missing in the middle and then not be able to fit it in. So you spend a lot of time just making sure you've got everything nice and laid out, organized, what's going to go on what and make a plan. And then as far as the gluing itself goes, archaeologists use two different kinds of glue. We use Elmer's sometimes, which is what this one was put back together with. And Elmer's is uh, a water soluble uh, glue. Uh, so you can, it's reversible. Uh, it's important for things to be reversible because, you know, in a hundred years, if a new glue comes available, we want to be able to use that for the future. Um, and also just for uh, reconstruction purposes, you might want to reconstruct it, but then you might want to take it back apart if you don't have the uh, sufficient storage space for a 3D vessel and sherds are much easier to store. So you could use either Elmer's or uh, other archaeologists use something called Acroloid or Paraloid B72, which is actually an acetone-based glue. Uh, and you get it's actually a two-part. You get the actual uh, um, B72 crystals. Uh, it's actually like a plastic. 
uh, that then disintegrates in the acetone and then you make the glue and then when you put it back together uh, if you need to take it apart again it's soluble with acetone so either way um, the reason that we only use those two kinds is because a lot of glues in the past uh, are not archivally stable and they also um, degrade over time so this vessel here was actually glued together at one point and then it came apart because the glue that whoever used it uh, the glue didn't stick together and it also sort of um, damaged the pottery a little bit and this happened all the time in the past but damaged the pottery because it sort of um, discolored the pottery at the men's at the breaks so we are very careful in the types of glues that we use and um, you know, and the decision to put a pot back together is not something that archaeologists take lightly. But when it does happen, uh, the reason I have this box here is because it's filled with sand. And so when you're putting a pot back together, I'm going to move this one aside a little bit. But when you're putting a pot back together, you actually need to leave the pieces for a very long time for the glue to set. Uh, because you don't want anything moving and getting jostled around. So if you find two pieces that fit together and you're sure that you want to glue them back together, what you would do is take the larger piece and you would stick it in the sand all right and you get it nice and vertical and nice and stable so you know it's gonna stick there it's gonna stay there for a while and then you would take glue I'm not gonna glue it together right now but you might take a paintbrush dip it in your glue or put the Elmer's thing on the side there and then kind of um, make it tacky and make sure that the pieces are really close together and then once you are sure that everything is perfectly together you would actually I would already have this you would take masking tape to kind of stabilize the glue as it's drying so you would take the piece and you know imagine this is glued and then you would stick it together with masking tape you know because masking tape doesn't leave marks or anything and then you would literally walk away you would just leave it in the sand probably overnight so that it glued really 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 well and that it would stay there without you know uh, to make sure that it was really dry and then you would go and find another piece and, and glue it onto there and maybe reposition it because it gets top heavy and stuff like that so that's the way you glue things back together and we do this again because it, it brings everything back to life for us there's one other thing that we like to do um, as an education outreach coordinator I like to um, give kids and adults these kinds of experiences so uh, sometimes we buy flower pots at um, you know at the garden stores at the home improvement stores and we glue them back to, or we don't glue them back together first we decorate them and we use you know we paint things so these are the regular terracotta pots and we paint them and then we put them in pillowcases this is a good stress relief too and we break them in the pillowcases and then they come apart in all these different sherds right and then I bring them places to events and stuff and people put them back together with masking tape and it's a fun activity to do gives you a little bit of an idea of, of what we do sometimes in the lab and how tedious the process is and uh, it's a really fun activity so if you've got flower pots at home you can do that kind of thing you can make it diabolical and have two different pots that are decorated kind of in the same pattern and then smash them all together and then try to separate the two pots back out gives you a really good example or a good idea about what archaeologists are up against but it's a, uh, it's a great activity but it also gives you a, a good idea of what archaeologists sometimes are up against in the lab all day so thanks for watching take care bye